And joining us now on the debate, in Oakland, California, Matis Wackernagel, Executive Director of the Global Footprint Network. In our nation's capital, Stephen Hazel, Executive Director of the Sierra Club of Canada. And Madeline Weld, President of the Population Institute of Canada. And here in studio, Bruce Cox. He's Executive Director of Greenpeace Canada. And Jeb Brugman, President of the Global Legacy Foundation. And as I welcome all of you to our program today, both in the United States, in our nation's capital, and here in our province's capital, I can tell you one of the nice things about doing this program is that we always get lots of good advice from our viewers on what we should be covering. To that end, let me read you this that we received just a couple of days ago, a few days ago. It goes like this. I sincerely hope that you will soon revisit the problem of overpopulation on the agenda. Conventional conservation efforts cannot save the planet alongside continued human population growth. Forget about green technologies, forget about carbon taxes, forget about designating a few more acres as a protected park. The only hope towards seeing environmental improvement is to reduce the human population to a sustainable level. Stephen, let me go to you first in Ottawa. Is he right? Yes, he is. Um, certainly, the human population is, is one of the major factors that is leading to environmental decline uh, around the world. And we have, to, uh, we have to somehow stabilize the population, uh, and that's, we just have to do that. And the difficulty is, is that it's really not an issue that really uh, politicians want to pay attention to. Well, we will for the next little while on this program. Matis, what's your view? Absolutely. I think it's a misconception to think it's about consumption versus population. The overall demand of humanity is already exceeding what Earth can regenerate. So possibly in the long run, not even the current population is sustainable. So it depends really on what kind of lifestyles do we want to live. If you want to live like in my home country, Switzerland, if everybody lived like the Swiss, it would take about three planets worth of capacity uh, to support us at the current population size and that's not feasible. So if you're really committed to human well-being, we need to address much more aggressively the population part of the equation. And luckily, the good news story is that can be done with very fantastic human well-being benefits. More on that to come. Jeb, what's your view? Well, I, I actually think that population is one of many variables. It's no longer as much a variable. I think uh, more importantly now is where the population is living. Uh, what is the size of the household of the population? Recent studies have shown that uh, actually uh, the larger impact on the environment is the vast multiplication of households between 2000 and 2015. We're going to have 253 million more households because families are getting smaller, uh, technology, uh, consumption patterns. So population is a variable that we have to deal with, but it's not the one we can most easily deal with, and that's the problem. The other ones we can deal with in more practical ways. Okay, Madeline, how about to you in Ottawa? Population is the main driving factor or a major driving factor behind every single problem that you can mention. And um, as for, I, I agree that we shouldn't look at it in terms of it's an either or problem, it's, a, it's an and and problem. And it's the basic issue is the drawdown of resources. And the drawdown of resources can happen in very poor parts of the world. For instance, along the Nile, uh, the, the Nile River may no, no longer reach the Mediterranean because of the use of water in countries along the way. And that is totally driven by population growth. Hmm. Well, here's a group of people, who, all of whom spend a lot of time thinking about and watching this issue, and you all seem to be on the same page of this, saying, yes, this is a huge issue. In which case, Bruce, and you know I'm saving the best for last here, why don't environmentalists talk about this at all? Because they don't. Well, I would have to be a bit of a naysayer, and I don't, I don't agree with the absolute nature of what, uh, what the listener had, uh, had proposed. Um, it is a problem. It's a part of the puzzle. But the IPCC, the, the International Panel on Climate Change, has, has said we have to start trending downward in emissions in the next 100 months, basically. We have 100 months to grapple with this problem. And while overpopulation is part of it, the real crux of the problem comes from the fact that a small minority of the global population is consuming at an astronomical rate. So to say that we can forget about renewable energy, we can forget about this, forget about that, is simply not realistic. We have 100 months to start grappling with the biggest challenge facing our environment. And overpopulation is not something we're going to tackle in the next 100 months, obviously. No, and it probably has more to do with education, literacy, uh, the ability of um, uh, women to, to understand family planning, 
uh, than something environmental groups would be would be tackling. Let me to that end uh, read a quote here from Franz Hartmann, who I'm sure many of you know uh, from the Toronto Environmental Alliance, who had the following to say: Most of the planet's ecological degradation is driven by unrestrained consumption by those who have the money to do so. Those who say overpopulation is the cause of ecological degradation typically end up pointing fingers at poor people who do the least damage to the earth and the countries they live in and ignore the destructive habits of those who do the most damage. Actually, Matis, I'm sorry, Madeline, am I hearing you? Yeah, Go actually ahead. that's, that's not yeah. correct yeah. because the most um, destructive impact on the environment is both by the very wealthy and the very poor, the ones who are desperately struggling to survive and in the course, in the, you know, in their desperate struggle to survive, they cut down forests for agricultural land and they get erosion. Um, actually, 80% of deforestation is, is due to increased agricultural expansion as opposed to large, you know, forestry companies or something like that. But Madeline, you'd have to agree that the, the, the bulk of that degradation is going toward feeding Europe and North America no, no, on it's things going like to palm look, oil. Look at the situation in, in, in India where the Green Revolution is in the process of sputtering out and a lot of that had to do with the massive increase in the population in India and the, and the loss of biodiversity you know 100,000 tigers in 1900 versus about 2,000 now. The other comment I'd like to make is on greenhouse gas emissions. I just read in the Ottawa Citizen that China is set to surpass the US in greenhouse gas production and we know that per capita China has a much lower um, a much much lower level of affluence, but you know there's 1.2 billion Chinese, so the numbers do matter. I, I think we let have me, to. In which stop case, the, number, the numbers do matter, and let me share a couple of, of numbers here, apropos of this issue that you've just raised, Madeline. If you look at the United States in energy consumption, this is from the Department of Energy from the U.S. The U.S. has 5% of the world's population share, but more than 22% of its energy use. So, Mattis, let me ask you this: Is it really more about consumption rather than how many people there are? I think the problem is if we focus on pointing fingers and say who is the guilty. I think a much more productive way of looking at the problem is to say what do we really want to achieve and from my perspective what we want to achieve is to have good lives for everybody. So it's, it's not about just saying who is the bad person and, and needs, needs to rectify their behavior but essentially by not addressing the demographic trends we are condemning, condemning millions if not billions people to miserable lives if not very premature death and I think that's unacceptable.